A leader is one who knows the way and goes the way. So guys, 2023 is by the corner. I don't know if you are still undecided when it comes to who to vote for come 2023 presidential election. Peter Obi has left a blueprint in Anambra State. I want you to take your time, listen to this interview that Peter will be granted. And I tell you, you'll be convinced on why you should vote in Peter Obi come 2023. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends and family. Thank you. There's no way, if I say, for example, I'm going to ensure that I secure Unite Nigeria. I'm going to govern by consensus rather than coercive and all this. It's for you to check the past and say, this man who is saying this, he's passed through some offices or places. Can we check what he did while he was there? Let me give you a, a few um, places where the Nigeria as a country is suffering at the moment, you know, and since you said you, you have some of these solutions, let's, you know, maybe you can briefly, uh, I'm going to name about three or four aspects of the country now on how you're going to solve these issues. So I'm going to start with security. I'm going to talk, um, go on to education, where the schools, universities have been closed in Nigeria now for the past um, nine months or thereabouts. The number one priority today in Nigeria is the issue of security. Because it's impacting on our, it's become an existential issue for Nigeria. You can't talk about being a country unless you're secured, unless your citizens are secured. So it's an existential issue that must be dealt head on, decisively. It's also something that if you deal with today, you can deal with your inflation. Because the worst part of inflation we're experiencing today is food inflation. So if you secure the country, your farmers will go back, they will produce more, and the food inflation will come down. But how would you solve it? How would you solve this problem? I said it without giving you fine details. We have to immediately review and restore structure the entire security architecture. Make it responsive and responsible. Responsive is that they will deal with issues as quickly as possible. Responsible is that somebody is in charge and if he's not doing it, don't wait. The person will go. By any standards in Nigeria, you're a very wealthy man. You know, you've done well for yourself. Um, a lot of your wealth in the country comes through importation. You import goods into the country, goods that are needed in the country. But now, one of the things you say you want to turn Nigeria into is a country that is less dependent on importation and more dependent on manufacturing its own goods. And some people would say, well, that's good for you. You've made all the money. Now you want to change things. I think they're wrong. I said I'll move the country from consumption to production. What I mean by that is that I want to see people wealth with enterprise. So if we say you're wealthy, there must be something you're doing to do. When it comes to, I was a successful businessman and I was involved in the whole value chain from agricultural produce to manufacturing to distribution. The what people used to see with me is the, the distributing part of it while I was in business. When I was in, in trade, I was distributing local goods as well as important to complement. What is important is that we want to move from, when I talk about consumption to production, is look at the vast land we have in the north. That is the f most important physical assets of the country today. If you cultivate all that vast land, we will feed ourselves, we will export. That vast land can change Nigeria. Mm. Do you honestly believe that, you know, 
you can win these Nigerian presidential elections? And I ask that question simply because people have pointed out to the fact that you are contesting against more established um, candidates in more established parties. Your party doesn't even have a single elected official anywhere in Nigeria. People say your party lacks structure. How are you going to defeat these odds? Do you honestly believe you can beat these odds? Well, Peter, you're right. But it's for the people to look at the past years. What brought us to where we are today is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years by the same people who are elected, by the same people who are in office today. So we're talking about the structure that have kept us where we are, the structure that have produced the highest number of people in poverty in any country, the structure that have produced the highest number of out of school children, the structure that have made the country one of the most corrupt countries in the world, the culture that have made it one of the most insecure places in the world, the structure that have brought about highest youth unemployment in the world, the structure that have made drug prevalence in Nigeria the highest, the structure that have made us to overtake India in infant mortality. That's why the fact that 1.4 billion. And we're doing. So I can go on and tell you about what this structure is all about. The structure that have brought this unit in Nigeria, that is the structure we want to remove. We want to bring a structure that will secure, unite, and bring about production-centered leadership in Nigeria, where we will start pulling people out of poverty, our children will be in school, where we will start ensuring that people get jobs when they leave school by supporting micro, small enterprises, a structure that will start governing by rule of law, a structure that will fight corruption. This is the structure we need now. So I believe that the people know what I'm fighting for. Where do we want to be in the world of today? The world of today has changed. And it must, we must be in the Committee of Developing Nations. Hmm. And that's what I'm promising.